Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about the most common causes of premature gray hair. Why are you aging so fast when it comes to the gray hairs? Why are they showing up so early? You know, typically gray hairs for African Americans are showing up somewhere around the age of 30, where you see your like first gray hair, and sometimes it's you know, on the top of the head, sometimes it's in the beard for, or the mustache for men, and then sometimes it's in places that you don't even think they're going to show up. And so I get this question a lot from people who are asking, you know, if I'm growing gray hair uh, prematurely, and is that a sign of some sort of disease formation in my body? Is that a sign of deficiency? Is that a sign that you know, I'm aging earlier, or is that a sign of wisdom? And what I will tell you unequivocally, it is not a sign of wisdom. <laughs> Gray hair does not always equal wisdom. And so what I'm going to get into today is help you understand what are some of the primary causes and reasons why you're prematurely growing gray hair early in the game. I remember back in high school, we had a kid in my in my graduating class who almost had a head full of gray hair. And we'll talk about the genetic component to it, which is very small, actually, compared to how, how common it is today for people to have gray hair. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think the reason why people are so concerned about gray hair is because most people want to age gracefully. And one of the ways that you continue to look your young age is by keeping that same monochrome look of your hair. And that's one of the things or compliments that I quite often get from a lot of people is that, hey, you don't have any gray hairs. And I do. I think I have maybe one. Or, I used to have one on the chin. I used to have one in there. Um, but I don't pluck my gray hairs. Um, and what I've noticed is, is that quite often, uh, once I do see a gray hair, I know that I'm doing something in my diet. So I tend to kind of be more intentional about getting certain things in my diet, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then all of a sudden that gray hair goes away. And so it tells me that gray hairs can be directly associated with deficiencies, things that we're not getting in our diet. And I think the reason why it's so prevalent today is because not only is the, so the the food deficient, but the soil is also deficient. So if the soil is deficient, then the food will be deficient as well too. And as you guys know, I own a tropical fruit farm and having the opportunity to learn about the importance of soil health and understanding that when the soil doesn't have it, the food isn't gonna have it either. And how that translates into healthy food now gives a very clear picture into understanding how soil deficiency leads to deficiencies in our bodies and how those deficiencies quite often lead to a, a, a huge number of diseases that we quite often are looking at as genetic. We're looking at as other things, but a lot of times it's just deficiency. It's really that simple. And so I wanna dive into helping you understand why you're getting those premature gray hairs and the question then becomes, well, is it possible to reverse it? And the answer is yes, you can reverse uh, and even stop the process of getting even more gray hair so that you can great, uh, you know, gracefully age into your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and uh, maintain that monochrome look of either, you know, brown hair, black hair, redheads, whatever it may be. And so one of the things I want to talk about, interesting to statistic that I saw was that 31% of men pluck their gray hairs. Okay, 31%. And somewhere around 82% of women will pluck their gray hairs. So we know that this is a major sort of cause for concern for aesthetics. And so um, the thing that I want to teach you before we jump into this is that quite often our body's outward signs are just a check engine light that let us know what's going on on the inside. As you guys know, I always say that. And so if you're 
getting gray hairs prematurely, it is definitely, in most cases, a sign and symptom that there's a possible deficiency. And what I'm going to do is first break down to you, how do we, how does our body even, you know, go about creating pigment in the hair and where it comes from and then how that process breaks down and what type of deficiencies lead to this or things that we do in our lifestyle today more so than the past that lead to this. And then also a few foods that you can eat to correct some of these deficiencies because you know, people always want to go to supplements, but the first thing you need to do is address your diet. You have to remember supplements are a supplement too. They can help, but they're not the foundation. So the foundation is always nutrition and that is food. So I'll give you a few examples of each of these. So without any further ado, uh, let's get started. Where does the hair color come from? Like where does our hair color come from? Is it just something we're born with and it's genetic? And that switch is either turned on or turned off, or is it something else? Well, our hair, hair color comes from the pigment melanin. The same melanin that is in my skin here, that is actually where the, the hair color is coming from, okay? And specifically, that melanin is, is produced by cells called melanocytes, okay? And these melanocytes are the same cells that are responsible, again, for creating the pigment in my skin. That same, you know, cells are creating the pigment in my hair as well, too. Okay. And the other thing that is also very unique about melanin is that there are two forms. There's eumelanin and then there's pheomelanin. Okay. Eumelanin is where you get most of the brunettes and the dark hairs like myself. Okay. So that comes from eumelanin. The pheomelanin is where you get the blondes and, you know, redheads from, okay? So that's where you get that pigment from. So two types. The other thing that I think is really important is that these melanocytes are located in the hair follicles, okay? In our hair follicles. Now, one of the things that I learned in my research is that African-Americans typically, well, typically what you'll see is that when you look at the hair follicles, typically one hair follicle creates one strand of hair. But what we see in African-Americans is that one hair follicle could create sometimes two or even three hairs, just one hair follicle. And so I found that to be unique. And, and again, and inside of these follicles, you're going to find these melanocytes that are producing the melanin that is actually creating the color in your hair. And how does it do that? Well, these melanocytes essentially inject melanin into uh, the, the melanin pigment into the cells that are containing keratin. And keratin is a protein. Our hair is made of 90% protein, okay? Keep that in mind. Our hair is made of 90% protein. As a matter of fact, in some cases, and these are very rare cases where people are protein deficient. In some cases, people will develop a craving to for hair when they become melanin deficient. And you also notice that as soon as you are protein deficient, your hair will start to fall out as well, too. And so I find that to be unique. This keratin or protein keratin um, that makes up 90% of our uh, hair, our hair is made of 90% protein, is the protein that makes up hair, skin, and nails, okay? The keratin, it makes up hair, skin, and nails. So this is a very important, you know, uh, protein as it comes to our aesthetics, hair, skin, and nails. Because if you look at one of the number one beauty supplements that people are purchasing out there, it's a, probably most likely a hair, skin, and nail supplement, okay? And it's really important to understand, you know, when you're trying to sort of navigate full, thick, beautiful hair to stop hair loss, to stop the graying of hair, it has to be an all-encompassing approach, okay? Because it's usually not just one thing. It's a combination of things that leads to not only gray hair or premature gray hair, but also hair loss as well too, because they tend to go hand in hand. Now, another major key, another major key is that UVA rays that come from sunlight, when they penetrate the lower levels of the epidermis, the skin, 
it triggers these melanocytes to produce more melanin, okay? Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a large part of how we're creating this melanin, is, which is the pigment that creates the, the color for our hair, a lot, uh, one of the significant ways that we trigger the production of this melanin is by getting sunshine. And when you start to think about the population of people specifically in the African-American community, around 76% of people are deficient in vitamin D because they don't get enough sunlight. Okay, so, and we've been, we live in a society today where we're constantly being told that the sun is dangerous and we need to put sunblock on every time we go outside. And what people don't understand is when you're blocking the sun, you're blocking this UVA, um, these UVA rays from getting into the skin to produce that vitamin D, but also to tr trigger those melanocytes, which are in the hair follicles to produce more melanin, okay? And so I think that's really important for people to know and understand because again, we are sun people for thousands of years. Humans have not only worked outside and lived outside, but we spent the vast majority of our time outside in nature exposed to the sun. It didn't matter if you're white, black, fair skin, most people spent most of their time outside in the sun, okay? for hundreds of thousands of years, for millions of years, fully exposed to the sun. I mean, we can go back 70 years ago and most jobs were outside manual labor jobs, okay? So for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, we were working outside and you never heard about, you know, cancer being the number one form of cancer or skin cancer being the kind of cancer that was running rampant. So it's important to know that a lot of things have shifted, okay? And it's also really important to keep in mind that you need sunshine, okay? You absolutely need sunshine, not just to make sure that you're getting that those UVA rays from the sun to produce melanin, but also for vitamin D and also for other various things like controlling our cortisol levels, which is gonna help with our sleep-wake cycles as well too, all right? So I just wanna put that out there because again, um, melanin production is going to be impacted by the sun, but it's also going to be impacted by other things too, but the sun is very important. And the other things that can impact your melanin production are gonna, is gonna be your hormonal imbalance, it's gonna be inflammation, and it's gonna be, you know, our aging process. We naturally age, and as we naturally age, uh, at some point, we will start to produce less and less melanin. I think a large part of that is because as we age, we get more sedentary and we don't spend enough time out, outside. We don't, we're not as active and we're not as conscious about our diet. And so I really don't think it's necessarily aging that is the issue in terms of like melanin production as it decreases. And that's why we tend to get more gray hairs. I think it's a shift in lifestyle. And the reason why I say that is because as you guys know, I lived in the blue zone for four and a half years in Okinawa, Japan. And those people who spent the most time outside in Ogumi Village, those centenarians, people who were living to 100 and living on a lifestyle that was conducive for them living to 100 and eating primarily a plant-based diet, uh, a lot of them were able to maintain their hair color Okay, so I think it's really important to understand that a lot of things that we attribute to aging is also part of what we think is normal about what we should be doing as we age. And living in that population and going and see other people who are living to 100 and other populations, what I noticed the consistent thing was they remain active, they remain um, um very conscious about their diet. They spend a lot of time outside in nature. Uh, and I think those things are very key and important to maintaining our health and also aging gracefully. So let's get into the major deficiencies and causes of premature gray hairs. So let's start with number one. Number one is copper deficiency. The reason why copper a copper deficiency could be sort of tagged in with uh, premature gray hair is because the en enzyme tyranase 
it requires copper to catalyze the action that produces the melanin. So if you don't have copper, you, you won't be able to create that enzymatic activity to actually produce the melanin in from the melanin site, melanocyte. Okay, so hugely important. So a copper deficiency could actually be a part of the problem as to why you're prematurely growing gray hairs. Okay, and where can we get copper in our diet? We can get copper from nuts and seeds, avocados, kale, chickpeas, and quinoa. Okay, and you're going to see a recurring theme here. Okay, because in our minds, we always think when I'm looking for one sort of supplement, we think that I got to buy this supplement, this supplement, and this supplement. When you can eat three or four different foods and get all those in one. So notice that reoccurring thing as I go through these. So number one, the, the first deficiency that you should probably check for is copper deficiency. Okay, it's key in tyrosinase being catalyzed by copper to actually create melanin. Okay, number two, vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 deficiency. And this is one of the most common causes of premature gray hairs is when you have a vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, now... I'll probably have to create a whole video about vitamin B12 deficiency because vitamin B12 is not only key for preventing premature gray hairs, but it's also so key for DNA, you know, um, synthesis and repair as well too. But it's important to know because it's involved in DNA synthesis and repair, when your DNA is impacted, guess what? You're going to impact your ability to make protein because protein is made from our DNA, specifically mRNA. Okay, so if you have issues with your DNA and it's not being repaired and it's not being synthesized correctly, then guess what? You're going to have an issue with actually synthesizing protein. And as, as I said before, 90% of our hair is protein. Okay, so if you got an issue with making protein, of course, you're going to have an issue with actually not only growing hair, but you're going to have an issue with also putting melanin in the keratin so that you can have the pigment for your hair. And then also you're going to have an issue in terms of with your DNA, which is a whole nother conversation around cancer and other things as well, too. And you're going to age essentially, because that's what causes aging when DNA uh, essentially isn't repaired, okay? So hugely important, this will influence the production of melanin, okay? When you have a vitamin B12 deficiency. And so I think that's very key to understand that if you go into your checkup and you when you go into your checkup and he tells you you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, this is something that has to be addressed. Okay, and don't take it light, lightly. Okay, and one of the primary issues, what I see, because quite often they'll say, you know, vegans will have issues, or those who don't consume animal products will have, will tend to have more issues around vitamin B12. But I'll tell you, you know, working in the hospital and filling thousands upon thousands of prescriptions, it looked pretty equal in terms of like the people who are affected by vitamin B12 deficiency. So, and the other thing I think is really important, and I'm probably diving too deep here, is vitamin B12 doesn't come from animals. It comes from a bacteria. So, and then it also, uh, your stomach acid plays a hu huge role too. So addressing vitamin B12 could be a little bit complicated. So I'll create another video about that, but you have to address it. And quite often when people get supplements, they just go out and get any supplement, but you need to get a methylated vitamin B12 supplement. You can't just get a regular one because most people have problems methylating. And if you can't get the methylated form of vitamin B12, the unfortunate thing is you probably won't be able to absorb it. Okay, so vitamin B12 deficiency is one of the most common causes of premature gray hair. So you have to address the deficiency. When you get that, that, that annual exam at the beginning of the year, your goal throughout that year is to correct any and all deficiencies, okay?
through food first, through supplementation second, and through ch and also through changing your habits, okay? So vitamin B12 deficiency, number two. Number three, zinc deficiency, zinc. And why is that important? Because zinc activates the melanocytes. I told you the melanocytes are the cells that actually create melanin, the pigment that is responsible for our hair color. Okay, so when you are zinc deficient, you're not going to be activating those melanocytes to create the melanin, okay? As I said before, the hair is 90% protein, okay? And zinc also, just like vitamin B12, plays a key role in DNA synthesis, repair, and then protein replication, okay? So when you have zinc deficiency, you're going to have an issue with DNA synthesis, repair, protein synthesis, the activation of melanocytes. That's just one thing. And most people know zinc for its impact on the immune system, and they don't know these. Okay. So it's hugely important to know and understand this is one that has to be correct. Zinc also plays a role, a huge role in prostate enlargement in men as well, too. In most cases, when men have an enlarged prostate, guess what? They're zinc deficient, okay? Now, one of the ways that you can tell that someone has zinc deficiency, it's not always there, but this is definitely one, is that when you look on your nail beds, you'll notice little white milk spots, almost like a drop of milk somewhere on the nail beds, okay? When you see those little white milk spots on the nail beds, that could be a sign and symptom that you have zinc deficiency. So I always tell people, if you got struggling with trying to figure out what to do about premature gray hairs and you look at your nails and you see that you have white spots on your nails, then the first thing you need to do is start getting more zinc uh, rich foods in your diet and then add in a little bit of supplementation, typically around five to 10 milligrams. OK, now, what are some good food sources of zinc? Hemp. Nuts and seeds, specifically hemp seeds, are the ones that I tend to use, especially in my, um, you know, my protein shakes, okay, when I make a, a smoothie, all right? Also, wild rice, not regular rice, not mixed wild rice, but wild rice is also very uh, rich in zinc as well, too. Chickpeas, okay? All right, you notice I said chickpeas earlier as well when I was talking about copper as a, uh, getting copper sources from foods, okay? And then also watermelon seeds. So when you eat your watermelon, first of all, make sure it's seeded. But also, you can eat those watermelon seeds and get zinc from it as well, too. It's a really great source as well, too, all right? Now, those are the three primary deficiencies that I look at when somebody is struggling with premature gray hairs. I'm gonna list a couple of honorable mentions of things that also can lead to premature gray hairs as well too. Uh, because again, it's not always simple. It could be complicated. It could be as simple as correcting uh, your zinc deficiency, but it could be a combination of things because I've also seen uh, premature gray hairs with people who have iron deficiencies people who have calcium deficiencies, biotin deficiencies, vitamin E deficiencies. And quite often, what that means is they're eating a really horrible trash diet, which has no nutrients in it. So you'll see all of these deficiencies as a result of having a diet that does is nutrient poor, okay? Also, people who use chemical hair dyes, these chemical hair dyes can actually affect the follicle which then could affect the, mel the melanocytes, so the mel melanocyte cells inside of the follicle, which then affects the amount of melanin that is being produced. So chemical hair dye, switch to, you know, uh, more natural products like henna, okay? Uh, if you wanna dye your hair, okay? But again, the whole thing is about correcting the deficiencies. You gotta start there. Other places that I've seen, uh, other things that I've seen also cause premature uh, gray hair is hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid, okay? Your thyroid is closely regulated with your metabolism and so many other things, okay? So if you have issues with your, um, your thyroid, where it's not producing enough of the thyroid hormone, of course, that's going to come from other deficiencies too. That can come from selenium, 
deficiency and other deficiencies too, but this also could cause premature hair, um, you know, gray hairs as well too. And then the other thing is smoking. Smoking creates oxidative stress in the body. These lead to free radicals forming in the bodies as well too. And these affect the melanocytes, so the cells that produce melanin that color our hair. And then also there could be a, a genetic component and the specific gene that is affected by, uh, that causes the premature gray hair. Uh, because again, I was telling you, I had a classmate, this kid was like 17 years old with half his head full of gray hair. It was just salt and pepper, still in high school. And so yes, there could be a genetic component to it, but understands that understand that genes get turned on early when your diet and lifestyle aren't in order as well too. Okay, you can delay that process by having a very healthy lifestyle, especially with your nutrition. But specifically, the gene that is affected is IRF4, okay, on chromosome 6. Okay, so if you have that gene mutation, unfortunately, you're going to develop gray hair very early. But I'm talking like very early in life, like maybe in your teens, maybe in your early 20s. That's when you see the genetic component there most often, okay? And then the last place that I most often see it, and most people associate this also with, um, you know, premature gray hairs is stress. Because what happens is when you stress, you're overstimulating the sympathetic nervous system. When you overstimulate the sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, you're going to increase the amount of cortisol, which is a stress hormone in the body, which is very acidic to the body. You're also going to increase the stress hormone noradrenaline. And when you increase the stress hormone noradrenaline, you're going to deplete the stem cells that actually produce melanocytes as well, too. Okay, these stem cells are actually what create the melanocytes, which create the melanin, which actually creates the, the pigment that colors your hair. And so when you are stressed, you're creating these stress hormones, which are very acidic and specifically noradrenaline is going to deplete the stem cells that make the melanocytes that create the melanin that colors your hair. OK, so I hope this has been helpful and some guidance where you can look in your lifestyle and nutrition, your stress levels, deficiencies, uh, conditions like hypothyroidism, um, cosmetic products. Uh, hygiene products, things like chemical hair dyes, where you can make a switch, make a shift in your lifestyle and start to kind of get these gray hairs reversing back to their original color. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.